back at the St. Johnsburg Fire Hall. With me right now, the man that does you're just busy you're just doing all kinds of shit around here uh trying to put my hand in a lot of different pots and uh you know uh but it i don't want to give most all myself a credit here at empire state wrestling there's a lot of guys that do more than just one role there's guys that are not just more than wrestlers not just a production guy not just a referee not just a ring announcer uh not just a promoter with brett like it, it, there's guys guys are doing so much to get the engine rolling and you can see with the crowds here you know chris gullo here and ring announcer is extraordinaire. <laughs> yes. Well, ring announcer. Right <laughs> yeah, I don't know extraordinaire, but uh, yeah. Uh, how long? How long? How long have you been doing the ring announcing deal? Uh, seven years. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, my seventh year anniversary is next month, so it'll be seven years since I started ring announcing. Uh, I got into wrestling 2010, mm -hmm. um, just doing ring crew, trying to help out. I refed. Uh, a couple matches early in 2011 and then got my first ring announcing spot because that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to ring announce and manage, uh, but, you know, I my first spot offer was a referee. I'm like, sure, I'll take it. And I still freelance as a ref once in a while. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. not something I've, I've gotten, gotten rid of 100%. So. Man, but that's the thing I guess the fans don't realize is that they see you up there with, like, the with like the microphone doing, doing your thing, but they don't see everything behind the scenes because I see you getting your cardio in. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, so like here, like I'm a ring announcer, but one of my biggest things and is a time management, uh, you know, the fans, they want to come for a great show, but the fans don't want to be exhausted. They don't want to be here for three, four hours. No. And one thing that we've done really well, especially as of late here at ESW, is we've gotten shows down to two and a half hours, uh, you know, and if we can stick around that time period, I think everybody's happy in all parties. Uh, all parties considered, the venue, the fans, the boys in the back. Um, How yeah. difficult is that? Uh, uh, you know, two and a half hours. You know, going over that. Or? It's it's very difficult. Um, very rarely is there a show that does that, and we've been doing it as of late. Right, right. But very rarely because you know sometimes a guy will bring a guy in a car. Oh, add him onto a match, do a scramble. Uh, you know, oh, uh, the you know the, these people that for tickets are going to be late. Like it's a lot. You know, or you book like 10, 11 matches. It's a lot of stuff that plagues a lot of indie feds and one thing that we do at esw is is we try to nip all those problems in the bud very early so and we have a consistent like i i gotta give credit to jonathan ash in the back he sets a schedule of how long everything's going to be and how long we need to get out of there and i basically follow that so I, <laughs> you know and i make sure you know there's some ring announcers out there. They'll go out there. They'll 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 talk about everybody's birthdays. They'll they, you know and and they'll just try to if they'll spend like a good 10 15 minutes before they announce the first match. Mm -hmm. And I, that's just not not my style. Like I, I'm as much as I am a wrestling fan, I'm also a sports broadcasting fan. I went to school for broadcasting, so oh, well. so I treat it as if I were you know announcing a professional football game or and all that. It's all on. TV timeouts, media, <laughs> money. Like, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to treat it like a profession. And I come in, you know, I'll make the announcements, maybe do a little crowd hype up, but let's get the business. The crowd's here for wrestling. Let's get the business. The pounce heard around the world. Yes. <laughs> Your vantage point of that, and did you think Gaines died? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sitting down, and I'm sitting next to Todd at the, at the timekeeper table. And when it happened... And, you know, I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit. Me and Anthony are very, very good friends. So immediately I'm like, oh, man, my, my friend's got to go to the hospital. So like, I immediately ran over there, and which is kind of cool in my role. I'm not breaking kayfabe or anything. It, it's kind of it would make sense for an right. announcer, an official to run over there. So I ran over there and he just smiled. He's like, I'm good. I'm like, All right. <laughs> and knowing Anthony. I wasn't sure if he was good or not. He may be just running on adrenaline. Right. But, uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, one of the coolest things I've ever seen in wrestling, uh, being a huge Monty Brown fan in the oh. 2000s, uh, I, I love the pound, so I'm kind of glad it's making a comeback now because of what happened here. So, oh, I guess if you had to say, like, uh, the wrestler back in the day, if it was Monty Brown, that's fine, but the wrestler back in the day that kind of grabbed you and made you a fan. Uh, so it's it's weird because like I'm so most people will talk about oh this guy was a great wrestler and this and that I've always been enamored with promos and characters and I I, I, I it, it's like if I'm gonna do one of three if we're talking about great wrestler Bret the Hitman Hart Bret okay. Hart was my guy yeah. if we're talking about 
you know, promo skills, Roddy Roddy Piper. Oh, my God. Yeah. And if we're talking about character, and really the first wrestler that, that grabbed my attention in 1993 was Sting. Sting, uh, Sting yeah. was my dude uh, forever in time. Uh, uh, you know, I, I argue with the guys sometimes if, uh, how well Sting was. And people, you know, he wrestled a lot of bigger guys that weren't that good in the ring in the yeah. mid, mid-90s. And I, I, I love that. Like those Sting Vader matches, Sting Abdullah, Sting Cactus Jack. You know, th- those were fun. <laughs> you know, those are some <laughs> of my favorite wrestling memories. Hey, man, well, if you see Chris Gullo anywhere... Give the man a high five. Yeah. <laughs> surfer Sting, too, by the way. Surfer as much sting. cool as Crow Sting was, I'm a Surfer Sting guy. <laughs> surfer Sting guy. Uh, back when they were, uh, when he was uh, with the, with the yep. Dingo Warrior back uh, in the well, day. He, he, well, after that, it was, it was his late, late 80s, early 90s, 90s run. Yeah, it's okay. A Man Called Sting. You know, he's, he's what the, the, the song, it's like one of the worst entrance songs ever. It's, <laughs> it's as big as a bull and quick as a cat. He's a man called Sting. Chris Gullo. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you for having me.